It's a fun, exciting quilting day today. I am making a quilt for a blog hop that's related to a rabbit. Hello, welcome to Quilting Color. My name is Shalina. Today, I'm making a rabbit quilt. And as I make this rabbit quilt, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks on how to make an art quilt. Art quilts have always been really scary to me. Um, when I first thought I would like to make an art quilt, I didn't know how to even do that. I'm not an artist. I don't know how to make an art quilt. And that was very a scary prospect for me. But one of the things that I decided to do was to pick a quilt based on a challenge or a theme. There's lots of places online you can find themes for your quilts. You can search for quilt challenges. Lots of those will have specific themes that you can use. You can look for any art challenges. For example, it doesn't have to be a quilt challenge. Um, or you can just pick a um, Pick up a book, like a dictionary, close your eyes, point your finger, whatever word your finger is on, that's the challenge that you use. When I first heard of this idea, I thought that maybe this wouldn't necessarily give you good results. You know, I don't want to waste my time on a quilt that is based on a challenge that makes no sense or doesn't really work. But I found that no matter what the challenge is, you can make a really beautiful quilt, whatever the word that you're using is. You can still make a beautiful quilt, just like you can make a really ugly quilt on, an, on what, the best challenge word in the world. It just, it just depends on how you work with the quilt and what happens while you're working on it. Another suggestion I have based on that is that you don't have to worry about making ugly quilts. Sometimes the purpose of making challenge quilts like this is that you learn what you like and what you don't like and what you learn what things work and what things don't work for you and a challenge especially a quick challenge really helps you fine-tune those things they build up your skill sets really quickly and because they're small challenges you know if you decide that you don't like that particular technique or that whatever it is that you're working on you can it won't take you very long to get to the finish, so you can just stop after you get to that point. Another suggestion that I have for you is that you find an inspiration photo. The challenge for this quilt is rabbit or bunny um, to start off the new year. One of the things that I had thought about is, you know, I don't know how to draw. I don't know what you wouldn't necessarily recognize if I just started drawing that it looks like a rabbit. And when I was first starting out, I thought that that would be cheating to use an inspiration that would be copying. But really, it's not copying. You're, it helps you find a source material, an inspiration picture, in several ways. One, you kind of get a better feel for what kind of rabbit quilts are possible, for example. And you get a bit better feel for what kinds of rabbit quilts you like. Once you have your inspiration, the point is not to just copy that and make something exactly like the, the original inspiration quilt. What you want to do is to look at that inspirational photo, decide what you like about it, what you don't like, like about it, decide what it is that's drawing you to that, and focusing on those aspects and not necessarily the whole quilt overall. So as you can see on, in this photo, my inspiration was a three-dimensional rabbit that was embroidered and I really like the look of that and I was gifted this pair of pants that I will never wear because it's the wrong size for me and I don't normally wear white pants that I think will work perfect for this project I can just cut out a rabbit out of this and just make that into a quilt, but I've decided that I want to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe I can give my rabbit a background and then put it on a setting where a rabbit has a nice place to live and that'll make a nice square or rectangular quilt that'll make it easier to bind. So let's get started. Okay, I've already shown you the pair of pants that I have. I thought I could just have a sitting rabbit so I can use as much of this fabric as possible. Although the rabbit could, of course, also be sitting this way. So I have to decide which direction we want the rabbit to sit, but right now I'm thinking this direction. There's also this pretty area. And then I have lots of leftover 
embroidery to use on another project. And when I went upstairs, I was thinking about other fabrics. I, ha I didn't have the pants with me when I was looking for it. And this fabric kind of struck out to me as interesting fabric to use. This would be a good, I uh, just, I guess I'm in a yellow mood today. And I thought this would be a nice background for the rabbit. Because I need something that, that'll stand out. The rabbit can stand out against the white. but I didn't want something that was too dark. And then I thought of other colors that would go with this, such as the green, another gold, another yellow. Like I said, I was in a yellow mood today. And then this little green kind of seemed like it would be good to have like a grassy area or a hilly area, something like that. Um, I think it looks okay with the gray. And there's another yellow for her son. I don't know if that's too bright, but I think it'll work. And then I was also remembering that there was some pink in the original fabric, in the pants fabric. So I got a couple of pinks that I think would, this one I think will go well with this quilt. And I don't know, this one might be too bright, but it's, it's an option. It's an available option, I guess. And I still have the gray that I used in my last quilt so that this one also seems to work with the lighter gray so we'll have to see if that one maybe if i need that for anything but so these are the fabrics that i'm starting with we'll move on to the next step on deciding how we're going to arrange the quilt so to start this project we're going to have to cut something i'm going to go ahead and cut this part out i hate to waste this but in case i don't use this part but It'll be easier to have a smaller amount to work with. This one has a lining. I don't think I'll need a lining for anything, although I could use it for a, a tail. Okay, I'm back. I found a pattern on patternuniverse.com. It's a sitting rabbit. I think it'll work well with this pattern, with this fabric. I had thought about one that was lying down but I, or jumping, but I didn't have one, so I think this one will work just fine. And this also will help the fabric be positioned correctly because it's meant to be going up this way. And this one probably would have worked fine, but I think this way maybe will work better. So what I'm going to do is to cut this in the middle because I don't know how much of the fabric. I think I'm going to need to use some of the seams here. So if I just cut in the middle, then I can at least straighten this out so I know how much I have available. Okay. So now I have a nice wide piece of my fabric. And I can position the rabbit in a way that will use, that will have the best use of this uh, embroidery. We make this as high as possible to get as much of the embroidery as possible. I want to get as much of the flower in as possible at least here. So maybe move this a little bit up a little bit. Feels like they're all in. And if I tilt it this direction, now the flower is all the way in. There's a lot of this is inside. Just, all right, so let me pin this down, and then we'll just go ahead and cut. Because at some point, you just have to commit and hope that it works out. straight on the back. Yep, everything's still straight. Okay. This is the hardest part is cutting through the embroidery because once you start cutting that's what you have kind of stuck with whatever you wound up with. 
Move the rest of the fabric out of the way so we don't cut anything accidentally. And I'm not going to use the good scissors because we're cutting paper. Okay, I checked the pattern again and it is it is um, straight like that, so we'll just keep going. seam allowance or anything like that. Now the rig reveal. Ta-da! I think that looks pretty good. I'll put just a little eye here and then we'll have a rabbit. So we were going to put that on a background to have a background all the way underneath it. Oh. No, I don't like any of this. I think I like this better. Going to plan B here. I like this. Darker background. And even though there's a little hill, I don't have to make hills that look like mountains or anything like that. And then, I really like this fabric, so maybe we'll just give the rabbit some flowers to decorate the area. The flowers are overlapping each other, so we'll have to find a way to make that look okay. Guess that's another tip for you. If, the, if you don't like the direction the project is going, you can go ahead and change it up. And if you make any mistakes, you can just keep working and see what else you can do with it. So I forgot to include the seam allowance for my rabbits, and so now it's going to be raw edge applique. I think it'll work out okay. I think the only reason I was thinking about um, sewing them to each other and then turning it inside out so that it is secure is because of the original pattern that I had seen with the rat, with the cat and the bear or whatever. I can't remember what the choices were, but that it's fine for your quilt to go completely different from what your original inspiration was. In fact, it's probably better that way that you just work intuitively and just work organically and just let the just let your ideas flow wherever they go. And you can make an art quilt that's truly your own. I decided how Oh, this quilt is going to be that bad. This sounds good. I think I want the flowers to be where the rabbit is facing so you can have something to look at.
I can use this darker fabric for the eye. So I will be here, right? Because if it's looking like that, maybe. I guess I still have it too big. We talked about this. So basically what I'm going to do is to pin all this down and then I can quilt it on. Normally I find a piece of back batting before I start making the quilt because that way I kind of know what size I should be using but I think this one worked out just fine with the size of the fabric that I was using for the background. So the quilt, about here maybe, I think I'm going to want it bigger than that. And I can still use this fabric as the backing. I'll make sure I'm happy with where the designs are. Then I'll pin it down. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll find a piece of batting that will go with this quilt. And then we'll start sandwiching. Consider the seam allowances here in this quilt. Let me move this one over a little bit just to give it room. Okay, I'm going to go find the batting and then we'll start sandwiching. Okay, before I start moving this around too much, I want to go ahead and glue the eye and the nose in so it stays in place. I don't lose it. And then I'm just going to make sure that my batting is long enough for this quilt. Put it in the corner so I can use as much of it as possible to save the batting. And then we have the backing put underneath here. It looks like it's the right size also. So that was a nice bonus. Center a little bit on the backing. Put this 
will be good. The batting is entirely underneath the quilt top and so is the backing. It looks like it's pretty straight. What I'm going to do, actually I'm going to go ahead and press it because this is, this could cause problems. So I'll go ahead and press this, just unpin a little bit here and here and then press it and I'll be right back. Okay, I've gone ahead and cleaned out some of the wrinkles out of this. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for what I what I need. So it's a little bit less wrinkled than it was before, and whatever wrinkles they are in here, just a crease line, and it's not a wrinkle, so it'll be fine. And over time, it, when I wash the quilt, it'll all come out anyhow. So now I'm going to go ahead and sandwich the quilt. Everything is still even. Make sure, let me make sure everything is still even. I think this is better now. And then I'll go ahead and sandwich the quilt. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to secure the applique with the free motion quilting and then I can work on adding any extra quilting in the background. It really helps to add quilting to the background to make the background go recede a little bit in the back and make the applique stand up. For a bigger quilt I would be taping the backing on the ground to the table at least or the floor wherever I'm um, sandwiching the quilt but I think it'll be fine here and then I'll do a quality inspection step to make sure that it is even in the back. I think this should be okay for a small quilt like this. I leave my safety pins open just to save time on having to put them together and close them up again. But I make sure that I have them secure in the box so that it's uh, they don't go wayward on me. Okay, looks flat and straight to me. I'll do a quality inspection on the back. Make sure everything is still flat. And then you can see here that there's a little bit of a problem here. And so I can just redo these two. This one. This one. These two. quality inspection. Okay, these two are a problem. And this one has a little bit of a problem. Sometimes I get impatient with this part, but I know that this is the most important part. And making sure that you have a quilt that looks the way you want it to be. Let's see. 
putting that on this side again. better. Okay, so this for the sandwich and it is ready. This one's just a little bit, I don't think I'll be fine. And it's ready for quilting. I post quilting content on this quilting variety show. If you like what you see, please press the like button and the subscribe button. Thank you. I'm going to use a walking foot to zigzag around the rabbit. Since I already have the applique foot on now, I'm just going to go ahead and free motion quilt the, um, the applique on now. Doesn't really matter where I start. machine a deep cleaning inside last week I finished appliquing all of the flowers to let you see it for a little different angle. Here's the quilt so far. And I've gone ahead and changed the thread into the light green color, which I think will work well for the quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and quilt things and then I will finish the rabbit. So maybe I'll just move the rabbit out of the way so it won't be in the way. And then I can just go ahead and just pull the ground.
the background is all quilted. And changed her old walking foot. I think a zigzag stitch will work best for me. all quilted. Little happy rabbit. I didn't quilt the inside of the rabbit which I think will be nice to let the rabbit stand out and I didn't quilt the hill either. Um, I guess I can decide later. Right now it looks okay to me but I'll see if that bothers me at any point in the future.
Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support and I'll see you in the next video.